Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for agreeing to do this. I appreciate both of you. Thank you so, so much. Yes. Um, how are you? How are you? How are you both feeling? How are you doing? Can you hear me? I'm fine. Yeah. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. How are you doing? You're good? Yeah. We're good. We're good. Well, I'm good. And I can see Doc is right. looking good too. So, yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel fine. I feel honored. I feel privileged to be here. Oh, yeah. no, we're privileged to have you yeah. here. Um, both of you, I know both of you are very busy. It's um, great to be here. Thank you so, so thank much. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs> thank you. Okay, folks, so the regulars know that you have to show our guest barristers, show them some love. This is Dr. Deomi's first time on Instagram Live, so please show him some love. <laughs> let's see the hearts, let's see the uh, love emojis. <laughs> show him some love. Okay, what are you guys waiting for? I, I can't see the love yet. I haven't seen the, the hugs. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome him. Aha, thank you. Dr. Domi, can you see at the bottom of your... I can see, I can Dr. see, lots of it. Thank you, great. Even Dr. Zoe <laughs> is showing you some love. <laughs> yes, now. <laughs> Thanks. Just showing you some love. Okay, let me, I, I, how do you do that? Let me see, let me see if I can show you some Hello. love too. Okay, I'm showing you some love to hang out cafe. <laughs> That's what both of you, Dr. Z. Yeah, Dr. Gilby. So, welcome, Dr. Ogabi. I don't want to see your hand, I want to see love, 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 love. <laughs> She's waving to us. <laughs> She's waving. Okay, <laughs> okay, so, um, let me just tell you guys why, um. Dr. Delmi, there's someone who's been saying hello to you. I think uh, de facto event, hello, cause D. Probably I didn't yeah, your cousin. That's my cousin. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So, yes, um, let's just tell you why um, I decided that I thought we should do this. So, about a week or so ago, I was scrolling on, um, uh, I was on in not Instagram, Twitter Live, Twitter. Mm -hmm. And I saw this gentleman who um, posted something about, um, he said he, he was depressed um, and he had to take some pills and all of that to get through his day. And I think at the end he said, but I will be okay. And, um, you know, with just that, I think it was just a few lines. It was mm. as if he just opened up a floodgate because a lot of people now started commenting. People say, oh, I'm depressed too. I have bipolar, I have got anxiety, and I had to take this pill, I had to take that pill. It was just, it was a lot. It was a lot. I mean, people talked about how they've uh, attempted suicide a few times. You know, it was just a lot. It really broke my heart. And I thought, my goodness, there are just so many people going through stuff that we are not even aware of. Yeah. And um, I remember I even posted something on my personal Instagram page. And I said that we should try as best as we can to be kind always because we don't know how many pills people have had to pop, you know, just to get through their day. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then thinking about it further, I thought, you know, let's talk about this thing because I know there's a stigma about, around um, mental health issues, depression and all these things. So I thought, let's get some um, experts um, on hangar cafe and let's get them to come and help us at the end of this session what we are believing god for is that um people will know that they're not alone that's why the topic is called uh, the theme is you're not alone people will realize that help is available people will also want to break the stigma uh, surrounding any mental health issues because you know like someone said if you if you've got um, a headache or you've got um, you know, you cut yourself or something, you go and seek help. And if you have um, anything related to mental issues, you should still seek help and not feel bad for seeking help. So, welcome again. And um, 
today we've got two amazing um, people on, two people who I've known for a long time. Um, we attend the same um, church. Local <laughs> but church. But outside of that, <laughs> <laughs> outside of that, um, I know them. Um, so our first uh, guest barrister is Dr. Adewomi Olushala Omusheye. He's a liaison psychiatrist in the NHS. In addition to psychiatry, he's also trained in medical law, ethics, and he has an LLM in medical law. Um, I know Dr. Dilmi has other uh, qualifications, but he was being modest, and um, this is all he sent to, but I know he, he has more. Um, <laughs> so he says he's a, he's a Christian, obviously, and um, he said something. He said, I consider it a privilege to be asked to spend time with friends, shedding light on issues relating to mental um, wellness. I, I, I love that. And his hobbies are painting, fine arts, golf, saxophone. But he said he can't really say that he's mastered all. <laughs> so welcome, Dr. Dilmi. Thank you very much. And you. my sister friend, Dr. Yeah, Z. Friend. Dr. My Zion. <laughs> Please remember to put the Olushala there too, so they know there's an Olushala. Okay, yes. Oh, there. they put Olush Oh, Thank yes, 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 mm -hmm. yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> so, welcome <laughs> Dr. Zion Olushala Ekondarin, who is a transformation specialist. I don't know what that is, but you need to, you'll probably explain that to us, please, later. Yeah, I was trying to make it sound important now. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> Trying to help people transform, change their lives, be better person, be better oh, okay. people. Yeah. Okay. Okay. She's a psychotherapist, an executive life coach, a mentor. Um, she's passionate about helping people to understand the choices available to them and to leverage them to achieve empowered, congruent, and fulfilled lives. I love that. I love that. You know that thing we always talk about? You have a choice. You have a choice. We all have a choice. Even though some people might say not necessarily, uh, that's a, a discussion we can have another day. Um, Dr. Zoe is actually a retired medical doctor. Um, did you specialize in anything before you retired? Were you a specialist? Nah. In... nah. nah okay. Not yet. I haven't, not yet. I haven't specialized. I haven't complete, completed. Okay. <clears throat> and well, she has lots and lots and lots of um, other qualifications, which I won't go into much. She's also, like she, like she said, she's a mentor. She's a me uh, founding member of um, the association that I founded, Christian Mentoring Association, and she's a good mentor. Um, she has her own private practice, uh, private counseling service. And yeah, let's mom. Thank you, Dr. Delmi, Dr. Zion. Thank you for coming on board. Well, talk of modesty. Um, psychotherapy itself is a specialized field. Wow. So, okay. I just thought I would check that thing. Because, uh, Thank you. Dr. Zoe was, uh, was, was hoping that would uh, remain under the radar. <laughs> so, psychotherapy itself is a specialty. So, I got you Thank there. you, Doc. I got you there. <laughs> you got me. You got me. Thank you so much. And a big hello to Chef's Club. Oh, yes. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so folks, please, 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 we want you to ask loads and loads of questions today. And they're ready, they said they will answer your questions. Um, let me ask, the first question I want to ask is, is there a difference, and anyone can answer this, is there a difference between mental wellness and mental health issues? Is there a difference? Hmm. Well, there's a, I, I will attempt something here. It's something I've actually been thinking about. Okay. That the, when we talk generally these days, people talk of mental disorders. Okay. But I say, you know, there's an adage or a saying, you put your best foot forward. Okay. Why do we want to focus on the disorder? Why not the wellness? Mm -hmm. okay. So there are two sides of the same book. Mm -hmm. it's like talking of day. 
we know that one day comprises day is not yeah. complete without night yeah mm -hmm. so a day of 24 hours we talk about the day the day day being 12 hours of light and then the night day being when darkness comes yeah. so what is mental wellness i would define mental wellness as the presence of positive emotions moves that lead to you know what i would describe as emotional and psychological as well as social wellness yes. the ability to function the ability to do things you want to do yes. um the simple way to look at it is using the abbreviation adl a activities of daily living and the ability to carry out your ADLs. Some people, some people say they are doing their chores. Some people say they are doing their errands. Okay. They wake up on Saturday, they go to the post office, they dry clean out, they whatever, whatever, whatever. They ballet, they ballet, they swimming. These are ADLs. These are mm -hmm. activities of daily living. Okay. Taking out the trash, taking out the uh, whatever, you know. The ability to do those things, feeling good about it, being able to complete it, not going through the day feeling gloomy, sad. Okay. That I would describe as mental wellness. Okay. Enjoying being in your own skin. Right. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. I, you know, it's, it's funny. I never really thought about that activities of daily living. Um, and the people who can't do that, they can't get through the day. They can do those things. Hmm. Okay, Dr. Z, anything to chip in regards to this? Uh, not really. Not really. I think his um, dog has done an excellent job of okay. addressing that. Okay, so let's talk about some of the um, issues that people face. And please, if you're able to give us definitions. Um, uh, so what, cost, what is depression? Someone had sent me a question and said, how do I even know that I'm depressed? Dr. Zion, maybe you want to start. <laughs> depression. What can I say about depression? I think, first of all, I think if a person is depressed, they will certainly know that they're depressed. Because one thing is they would be, you know, um, Doc just spoke about wellness being the absence the presence of positive emotions okay. a depressed person certainly is not experiencing positive emotions they will find that they are they are they are gloomy as doc said they are tired all the time they have no they find no pleasure in the things that they normally found find pleasure in they'll find everything requires an extra effort they will you know they'll find out that um you know, maybe their sleep is affected, either they're sleeping too much or they're not sleeping enough, they're eating too much or they're not eating enough. But even those, the, the real thing is just this total lack of, it's like someone has sucked the life out of a person. They just don't want to do anything. Nothing, nothing excites you. Getting up in the morning is a chore. Everything you want, you know, these activities of daily living, yeah. the person will actually really struggle to do them and probably would, would only be doing the things that they absolutely must do. Right. Um, so for example, a person had a child, obviously they would be doing the minimum just to keep, keep that child, you know, ticking along because obviously they need to get them to school. And in extreme cases, even that they wouldn't be able to do. So yes. Yeah, so I think if a person was depressed, they would know, they would, they would be aware of that. And, and, you know, it, interestingly is, you know, it's a, it's a continuum. Okay. This depression thing, you know, there is the severely depressed and there's the mildly depressed, you know, so a person could be just feeling slightly, you know, but the, I think the point is that it's, it's persistent. It's continuing for, you know, it's not, it's not like something happened and yeah. I feel a bit low or, you know, I hit my car, you know, I had an accident, I feel low or I right. lost something, I feel low, right. regardless of what's going on, the yeah. person is just, it's just a sustained, yeah, low feeling. Okay. Uh, and, and just to add to that, yeah. I mean that's 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 well put. Yeah. Um, and just to add to that, the Royal College of Psychiatrists 
uh, in conjunction with other world bodies. Yes. Um, they have what they call the ICDs, International Classification of Diseases. I think it's now 11 or something. They, where they quantify, uh, para, where they set parameters by which diagnoses are made so that we don't go uh, mistreating people. So they are international standards. Okay. Mm-hmm. People are becoming more aware of their rights. So if somebody mm-hmm. should sue a doctor, for instance, yeah. um, or sue their health provider, there are standards by which the courts will look at the care provided. Okay. Now, they have set parameters. This It is normal that if anybody suffers loss yeah. or faces threats, that they will feel low. Now, the but if the feeling of doom, of gloom, of feeling low, uh, not able to function, yeah. lasts for more than two weeks, okay. it becomes depression, irrespective of the cause. Right. So the concept of people saying, oh, it is a depression secondary to this loss, mm-hmm. It's been found that the normal human being, the, well, using the word normal very loosely, okay. uh, we are all equipped with uh, a regulator in all, in all of us to cope okay. with stress. Right. And if a stress comes on a person, be it bereavement, whatever it is, yeah. they should start coming out of the, out of the dark tunnels okay. in about two weeks. Okay. But if they remain there, beyond two weeks, yeah. it becomes major depression. There are various uh, f- uh, diagnostic criteria by which depression is uh, diagnosed, but the most important of it is a uh, low mood. Um, low mood or depressed mood uh, or lack of interest in pleasure. Yeah. So there are other things that follow that, but those two, lack of interest in pleasure, low mood. If it lasts longer than two weeks, it becomes depression. Under two weeks, you could say it's a milder form of depression or you could call it stress. Okay. Now, the parameters that diagnose depression can also last some years in people, in some people. And if it's up to two years, some people are just like that. And I will explain what I mean by that later. But that's called dysthymia. That's called what? This Okay. okay. Um, where it's sort of low-grade, pervasive, depressive feelings. Okay. But irrespective of what fancy word we want to describe it, yeah. um, I think one of the crucial messages of a meeting like this yes. is to let people know that there is no shame in asking for help. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There is no shame in asking for help it's at so all. Important. It's so important. Yes. Wow. Okay. So that's a, a definition. So depression. Let's talk about. Let's I de- try and give definitions to some of these issues that we face. Then we'll look at the causes, um, Doctor. Doctor Zoe and Doctor Delvi. So there's depression. I mean, some of the things that I saw uh, that people were talking about on Twitter land was so depression, bipolar. Um, I think. There was anxiety. Yes. Um, is, there, is there any other one that people? Well, this this time here this is time part here. of okay. it. Mm-hmm. There is a skill there. If depression gets very uh, very bad, yeah, it could also lead to psychotic features, which could include having delusions, oh. uh, delusions of guilt. Delusions. You see the word depression. Yes. I mean, let's 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 dissect that word. Please. The word talks about depressing. It talks about pressing down, doesn't it? Yes. It talks about everything being low. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, when it happens, everything goes down. Mm-hmm. The mood goes down. Yeah. The sense of self worth goes down. The how the person sees themselves, how you know. Everything, their sleep, their appetite, the sleep may also be increased. So a lot of things, their functioning, their ability to cope. Yeah. What makes anyone a human? What makes anyone being able to function? It all goes down. Yes. Now, talking about 
the bipolar and all those things. As the word, the, the beauty of uh, all these medical terms is that over the years, people use Latin words uh, just to confuse everybody. But <laughs> the good thing is now, 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 now we, are, we are beginning to break them down. You know, <laughs> it's true because in that bipolar, the word bi yes. means binary, isn't it? Yes. By 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 fold door, the fold the door that folds into bipolar. What are the poles of the poles? The extremes, isn't it? Yes. The northern pole, okay. the southern pole. Okay. Bipolar means a person whose mood swings from the over elated, over anxious, overactive to the very low. Mm. That's bipolar disorder. Okay. So the mood swings between two extremes. Okay. In both. In both. Let's not kid ourselves. I talked about the person becoming very agitated, very high, very they can't function. It's a very distressing state. Mm. The person will look happy, the person will wear bizarre colors and put together all sorts of things and be all over the place but it's a very sad state for that person by wow. the same token. So there is, the, there is bipolar depression okay. uh, where when the person is in that low state and there's bipolar mania or hypomania where the person is manic and all over the place. Yeah. There is also what we call the unipolar depression, which is where this person does not suffer mm -hmm. that um, that swing to the high state, right. they are just depressed, they are just low. Now, they, 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 uh, Dr. Z Dr. Uh, Zoe used the expression continuum earlier on. Yeah. All these things are a continuum. You see, whereas we use words and we use terminology or we use classifications to differentiate all these things, yeah. the body itself doesn't know those things. <laughs> the body is one. <laughs> <laughs> the body is one. We are just, so if somebody presents to a doctor, for instance, in a low state, yeah. that doctor must have at the back of their mind that this same person could become ang very anxious tomorrow. Okay. This same person could become quite agitated, quite high. Right. This same person who's not showing signs or reporting uh, suicidality or self-harming ideations mm -hmm. could go to that stage okay. because our job is to ensure that we minimize risk. Right. Wow. What dictates everything we do yeah. is you minimize risk. Okay. Risk because there's to no self point, there's and no risk to others and to other people. Yeah. There's no point treating, coming up with fanciful treatment and using fanciful words if your patient and ends up topping themselves, mm -hmm. committing suicide. Mm -hmm. So depression is a is a very debilitating condition. It's a condition that has a spectrum. It goes through a very wide spectrum, and it is very distressing, not just to the sufferer, mm -hmm. but uh, it's distressing yeah. for the people around them. Yeah. It's distressing for everybody around yeah. them. Wow. It limits everything they have. It limits their potentials in life. It's caused people to embrace risky behavior in a bid to treat themselves. <laughs> many take to smoking. Many take to drugs use. Many takes to alcohol. Many okay. takes take to looking for acceptability in in, the, in exploitative situations. Okay, Dr. Delby, hold it there for yeah. a minute. Let me just ask, a, let's go back. So yes. what, I know you, you talked about um, one of the things that causes depression is maybe grief. Um, yes. And I know that Dr. Zoe, yes. in, in your profession, you see a lot of people come to talk to you about different things. So what are some of the things that causes depression? Because I think at the end of the day, it's all these other expressions that we have, bipolar, um, some of these names that I can't even pronounce. It starts with from depression. So what are some of the things that causes this um, thing, this depression? What causes it? What causes it? Apart from, so we've mentioned grief. Um, can, what else can cause it? 
is it in fact one of the questions people have also asked is is it hereditary is it something that can can be passed down doc what do you want me to go 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 doctor because yeah, i was going to say you know basically you know any kind of loss would predispose someone to getting depressed yes Okay. So not necessarily a person, anything, you know, loss of a job, loss of a circumstance, loss of health, loss of well-being, anything that involves some kind of loss, some kind of drastic change, you know, stress, finance, you know, losing, someone's just putting there, losing, as I said, loss would right. predispose. But apart from that, I guess, you know, even things like illness, okay. you know, which I guess falls on the loss of, of health, they're all things. And then as they say to any sudden life change, mm. which may not necessarily be a loss, but you know, again, you know, the, the things happen to us in life and they affect people in different ways. What somebody else would shrug off, another person would take it to heart and it would, you know, um, bring them down. And as they say, if, it, if they don't snap out of it quickly, yeah. then it would tip them over into, into depression. So, yeah. Um, I don't even want to go into the wild things like medication, you know, things like that. But then, you know, different side effects. That, yeah, I think I think I would keep it simple and just say, you know, major losses, major changes that a person can't deal with. Those are the things that would tip someone into. into I, I, I would I would like to add. Mm. <clears throat> I would like to add that um, depression has been with humanity. Mm -hmm. Right from the time of creation. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Depression is even mentioned in the Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Depression exists in a lot of our native African proverbs. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Yoruba words. Yeah. For depression. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, for the Yoruba speaking people, the the term irewesiokon. Mm. Yeah. The suppressed mind. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So. What are the causes? Genetics plays a part. I will not say it's a cause. Okay. I will say it's associated. Different. If you say something has a causal relationship, it means <clears throat> it must occur whenever the, the, the so-called cause mm. exists. Mm. It must be there. Mm. It doesn't. What it does yeah. is that genetics uh leads to heightens the risk put it that way okay heightens the risk so relatives of people who suffer major depression can be prone to it yeah. but are more likely to suffer depression if the same circumstances or similar circumstances present themselves okay. so stresses perceived or actual loss not imagined loss, okay. threatened loss or actual loss. Right. For instance, somebody undergoing, going through investigation at work, mm -hmm. things like that. Yes. Yeah. They have not lost their jobs, but there is, there is real reason that they might lose their job. Okay. Now, other issues are life events. Life events like um, separation, divorce, yeah. bankruptcy, things like that. We saw that during the COVID lockdown. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. And that goes into another factor, which is uh, personal support. Mm. Many people have relations they depend on, services they depend on, yes. that they could not access during the lockdown. Yeah. That led to problems. Yeah, in Gender. fact, you know, talking about that, I saw um, a post, someone said that, for the last year or so, she was only, I think she said for six whole months, she never saw anyone. Yes. And she was, and I, I was like, what? Six months she, she was yes. alone. Actually, during the lockdown, during the lockdown, the statistics reveal that there's been 20% increase yeah. in the number of people with depression. Wow. I know of people that... Um, the anxiety of washing their hands. Mm. I know of a lady who washed her hands to the point that the skin started to peel. Wow. 
um, the lockdown is over now, but she has not recovered yet. Mm-hmm. Prior to the lockdown, she was one of the warmest people you could you could meet. Wow. Mm-hmm. So there is there is genetics, there is life events, there is previous history. Somebody who suffered one episode of depression is more likely to suffer another episode of depression. Uh, loss of personal support is there. And of course, there is gender. Um, women, women are two to three times more likely to suffer depression than men. Really? Yes. Mm-hmm. And excuse me, I would have thought it would be the other way around because women at least talk more than men. Yeah, they do. So but how come women the are... <laughs> I'm <up> with you. <laughs> Again, I would say again, it's down to genetics. Okay. Even that thing about a life event is all down to genetics. Okay. Because we all handle stress differently. Okay. And some people said, some somebody said that a lot of the men yes. who are not diagnosed as depressed yeah. may actually have been diagnosed as something else. They may have been diagnosed as substance <laughs> abusers. Okay. So instead of internalizing their stresses yeah. and becoming depressed, yeah. they've taken to alcohol. Okay. Okay. They've taken to cannabis. Okay. They've taken to other drugs. Mm-hmm. A lot of them, you will not say are depressed because they've ended up in the criminal justice system. Mm-hmm. Okay, makes sense. They are cooling, they are cooling their butts off okay. in a mm-hmm. cell somewhere yeah. because they've done something. Okay. Also, we must also know that suicides are commoner in the men. Yeah, I think I saw that somewhere. Yeah. So mm-hmm. before people get to that point of where the stresses could have earned them the tag of depressed, right. okay. they've, they've done the very thing. Wow. Okay. Um, I think his internet is going. Okay. No, it's um, some nuisance message coming up okay. about uh, renewing my phone coming up on the screen. <laughs> so what it is, is that these are the factors that contribute to depression. I think I think if when people ask questions, we can expand shit on them. There's no, mm-hmm. there's no point going too far down that path. Okay. But um, the um, one thing to note is that in a lot of these things that we talk about, Yeah. Research is beginning to reveal that genetics plays a major factor. Okay. Not cause, so, but is a factor. Can I ask a question about that genetic bit? Is yes. it is it predominantly nature or nurture? That is another concept that we have to come <laughs> up with at some stage because when you say nature just for our audience, nature is, do people inherit these things directly? I don't think so. Nurture is, if somebody is raised by a parent or parents who are depressed themselves, what quality of life or what quality of upbringing were they able to give that child? How much coping mechanisms did that child learn from the parents? it's difficult to say. A lot of these things are not yet understood. In fact, the next frontier in medical science is the psychological. Psychiatry, psychology are now being understood more. I mean, there's not much you can do with surgery. Mm -hmm. Cutting a person open, cutting organs open, there's not Mm -hmm. much you can do with it now. Man has done it to the point that now man has done it to the point that computers now do it. We now have robotics. Robotics. Yes. But we are just beginning to understand the human. And the Bible, as the holy book that I subscribe to, uh, pardon me, uh, I will use that as examples, actually talks about Hosas, where it says the heart of man, who can know it? One of the things that differentiates us 
as humans from God is the possession of volition, isn't it? So it's it's very difficult to really say. I would say nature, nurture. The way I will go today is combination of both. Okay. 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 okay thank you so much. Please, folks, if you've got questions, put them in the question box where the you can on your phone. You see where the question mark is. Question mark is. Okay. Let's take um, the first question, doctors. Does the two week? Remember, you spoke about the two week before. Does the two yes. week allow for after the funeral of the loved one? Do you understand that? I think I do. Okay. I think mm -hmm. I have an idea. I will say, let's assume somebody suffers a loss. Yeah. I think the onset of depression will be from the day of the loss. Okay. And I will assume that there was a period of planning that led to a funeral. Okay. Of course, you it's it's natural that the person who's departed will always be missed. Yeah. But you know the expression that time heals all wounds. Mm. Time is a healer. Mm. Is what we have to look at here. I how do we quantify the date of the funeral? Is the it was the funeral the same day the next day? three months later, three weeks later, we can't say. Mm -hmm. But if the bereaved do not begin to feel better, yeah. or at least better able to cope with the loss, two weeks after the death, I would say there's depression mm -hmm. there. Especially if it's getting worse, okay. and if it's interfering with day-to-day -day functioning. Okay. Okay. So the, 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 the crucial thing is not in feeling low. The crucial thing is not in feeling loss. The crucial thing is interference with day-to-day -day function. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. You know, someone um, said that um, when a person loses, when you lose a person, the, the pain doesn't go away. You just expand. The pain mm -hmm. remains the same, but you get, you get bigger at coping and you, you expand more around it and you kind of find a way to just put it somewhere in your psyche and get on with it. So I, I think I agree with you that if, if, if you lose somebody and you're not growing, you're not accepting it and growing beyond that pain, then yeah. you would know that the person has tipped into, into yeah, depression. Okay. Because um, in our culture, see how long it takes to, to lay people to rest. It could be a year, it could be nine months, it could be two weeks. Okay. Um, would you consider someone on cancer hormonal medication whose mood, mood swings as depressed? So someone who is on cancer hormonal medication and she has, or the person has mood swing, will that person be considered as depressed? Hmm, definitely. Okay. In fact, on, on cancer units now, yeah. on cancer units and on ITU, or ICU, in some places, intensive care units, intensive mm -hmm. treatment units. Um, now, we, they are now posting psychologists mm -hmm. to those wards. Mm -hmm. OK. OK. One of, the, one of the things where we have short, we had shortchanged people through the years yes. is that medical science had not paid attention to mental health. Mm -hmm. right. When I was a student, we regarded the psychiatric posting as a holiday season. <laughs> we never went to class. <laughs> it's the truth. It's true. We will be hard pressed to find anybody from our era, I mean, Dr. Zoe can attest to this, in medical school who will say, I want to be a psychiatrist. You probably will never find anybody like that. In fact, we had jokes about psychiatrists. Okay. that they know nothing, they do nothing. Yeah. They just it's talk. Of, <laughs> yes. It's one of the greatest disservice mm. that we have done to humanity. Wow. Cancer is a cause of depression. Wow. Cancer is the cause of depression. depression. Yes. Any you know, that's life, another thing. Do you want, okay, can you yes, explain? Any life-threatening condition, anything that's going to, I mean, 
if somebody has cancer, let's face it, people face these things with bravery. Yeah. I look at people going through it. The truth about it is, in their mind of minds, they are not seeing recovery. That is the truth. Many people are looking at the gloomy picture. They are looking at the, the most worrisome outcome of it. And they need to be helped. And this is where psychology comes in. Yeah. And research has shown, um, there's a study where they looked at people with cancer and depression. Yeah. And in those in whom they, they found out that the outcome of treatment was better in those for whom antidepressants worked. Okay. 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 Because when the mind, the mind, I mean, somebody once gave, asked me a trick question, where in the body is the mind? <laughs> uh, is it the heart or the brain? It's actually the brain. When the mind is at rest, yeah. the rest of the body is okay. Mm -hmm. The motto of the Royal College of Psychiatrists says there is no health without mental health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the motto of the Royal College of Psychiatrists. There is no health without health. Mental. There is no health without mental health. Yeah. 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 I don't care what organ of the body you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. If the brain mm -hmm. is not at peace, the whole of the body cannot be at peace. I think um, pediatrics had, they had it, they got that quite quickly. Because I remember when my, um, I had a baby that was unwell. I was offered a lot of um, psychological support. Right. The fact that most of us didn't take it seriously even then, because it wasn't a thing then, but it was always on offer. They kept offering, they kept offering. But again, again, you know, this is the parent that they're offering support, yeah. not the actual patient. Okay. Well, you know, as Doc said, think about it as a loss. Person losing their health. And as he says, they're thinking of, you know, they're in as much as they're trying to be um, positive. Yes. And, you know, the majority of the people are not even Christians. You can hang their feet on something. The majority of the people are just looking at months of chemotherapy, extreme pain, most likely death, um, rounding up the activities, the effect on their family. I mean, when you look at it from that perspective, you can understand why a person would be very depressed mm. in that situation mm. or yeah. could get very depressed in that situation. Mm. Wow. Okay, let's take okay. another question. Um, uh, okay, I'm not sure we we'll want to deal with this now because I'm sure we'll come to, but let me ask, let me answer, uh, let me <laughs> read the question. Are Black people more likely to be medicated for mental health issues instead of helped with lifestyle issues? Um, there's another question. How can one manage genetic depression? How can you help someone who's depressed but doesn't want to admit it? How can you support them in first acknowledging the depression and then seek help? Then last question. I, <laughs> you can pick anyone. Does personality <laughs> play a part on how it manifests in the depressed spectrum? Really, <coughs> excuse me, that question. I was going to ask this question. How come some people are just able to bounce back from loss or any one of these things that you talked about and some people are not? Because when you, when you guys were talking, it actually crossed my mind. Like, does personality play? And I'm glad um, the lady asked that question. Does personality play a role in this? I mean, I, th I think personality, there's many factors. Personality, the inbuilt resilience that the person has learned over the years yeah. you know it, it, so many things that the, the way they were they were the, the experiences of life their parenting somebody who has bounced back from a number of losses you know maybe lost their job bounced back from bankruptcy you know you know there's what what we would call the comeback kid yes. they probably would deal with it a little bit better things like faith as i referred to yeah. all these things would would affect you know, the people surrounding them, the messages that they're hearing, you know, that if, 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 if a person is unwell and 
everybody's coming there and sitting there and greeting them, you know, paleo and behaving as though they're about to pop their clogs immediately. Of course, it's going to affect them more than somebody who's surrounded with positivity, you know. But so, but it doesn't mean again that if you take two people and you surround them with the same positivity, they will respond in the same way. So it's multifaceted, you know. Um, you know, those are my thoughts anyway. That you know, th there's a lot that makes it go that way, and uh, yeah. Okay. Yes, I think personality is dictated by an interplay between the environment mm -hmm. and, the, and genetics. Mm -hmm. So genetics comes into play again here. Yeah. We are personality, we are products of our environment, we are products of our experiences. We are products of the codes already put in us. Mm -hmm. So definitely it plays a role in depression. Okay. We cannot grow up in the same house, but we cannot both be good athletes. No. Mm -hmm. Some people have a very good tone. For people who play music, they just can respond to musical tones yeah. very well. Yeah. Some are described as completely tone deaf. <laughs> <laughs> you know, even even if they are, even, <laughs> I mean, um, if you stand beside such a person in, in church, for instance, and they, they are thinking, <laughs> you find yourself looking aside and wondering, are we singing the same hymn here? You know, so so we are different, but that is where the greatness of God exists. It's a, it's a, it's in our diversity. So yes, personality plays a role. Personality plays a role in what, how we cope with things. Um, two pieces of string from the same, if you have a spool of a, of a, of a string, yes. cut, cut to 24 inches and uh, cut 24 inches, maybe in about six places, place them together, subject, subject them to weight, it's not the same amount of weight that will break each of them. Yeah. Two pieces of elastic band. Yeah. If you pull them, they will break, they will get to their breaking points at different yeah, times. times. That's so, true. so we all have our strengths, we all have our weaknesses. Yeah. And that again leads us to the pandemic and the lockdown. Mm. Because whilst we were isolated, one of the things we do as human beings is when we relate to each other, when we, when we relate to each other, when we rub against each other, yeah. we are learning from each other, we are helping each other to cope. Yeah. But when the lockdown came, people were immediately isolated. Yeah. I mean, further isolation is going to happen with this ULES and um, not getting into the politics of it with these ULEs and congestion charging and all that, yeah. it's almost like an un unseen um, border control mm -hmm. has been placed across London. Wow. Yeah. You cannot go to certain places, you cannot relate to people. As if the insult, the assault of the pandemic was not enough. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, these things do play a role. Okay, so, um... So what's the what's the um, what's the treatment or what's the hope for people who have depression or what any of these other things that we've talked about? What's the way forward for them? I, I even wanted us to I wanted us to do, which and I think it can be answered as part of that question. Yes. What you just asked them. Okay. The the question someone asked about how, oh, how do you help somebody who wouldn't admit? Yes, please. That... Sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. So, Go on, Doc. So, yes. Doc, over to you, Doc. Oh, I thought you were taking it. Okay. One of the ways you help them is by being with them, by being present with them. Mm -hmm. okay. The person may not admit, but I, I have something I used. I know time is, time is uh, going quickly. So I would, I would use something I call the five P's. Five P's, five okay. P's, mm -hmm. yes. If you find somebody going through mental and emotional distress, yeah. you want to be around them. Don't leave them alone. So you want to be present. Okay. 
you want to offer them practical help. So the first P is present. 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 Okay. The next one is practical help. Practical mm -hmm. help, okay. Are there things they cannot do? Are there things they should be doing? Okay. They need to go to their GP, offer to go with them. Okay. They need to make phone calls, do it. Are they not putting their clothes in the washing machine? Help them mm -hmm. to feel good in themselves. Okay. They have not been cleaning the house. The house is dirty. There is, they've not walked their dog. So the dog has do you know this, done this it. Is, Sorry, doctor. You know, this thing is good because it's, Sometimes what we do is, what's the matter with you? Can't you see that you that, cleaned it? Thank you. Thank we you. We end so. up judging them. Yeah. We end up, yeah. what, what, you see, and I'll come to that. So offer them the practical help. Okay. I will okay. make it all brief. I would, uh, I will send you the information I have. Okay. Should anybody request things later. Okay. So that because for the purposes of time, we don't want to, mm. we want to take as many things as possible. So we want to be practical. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you are the praying type, if you are the praying type, if there are people who pray, yeah. if there are people who will respond to prayer, pray with them. That's the mm -hmm. third P. Okay. The fourth P is to be personal. Okay. Personal means to be, to be with them. To it's when you are with such a person who's going through such challenges. It's not the time to start showing them videos on your WhatsApp of. Uh, somebody asking people to define the meaning of incongruence <laughs> or those, those kids that we all share. <laughs> it's not the time to, dis to start talking about the Biafra agitation or things like that, mm -hmm. or showing them uh, pictures from the party they could not attend mm -hmm. that you were able to go to, mm -hmm. or the, la the latest shoes you have bought that, you know, so you want to be personal. You want to show them that whilst I am with you, I am with you. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. It's not me just killing time. You are not an inconvenience. Okay. That's what I mean. Okay. And the last P is to be protective. Mm -hmm. Now, how I belong. <laughs> protective means giving assurance of confidentiality. Oh, thank you. If I think somebody is going to go out and blab about me, mm -hmm when they leave my place? Why would I share my secrets with them? Mm. So we want to be protective. Wow. You want to tell the person, look, I've got your back on this. This is not... And the person says to you something along the lines of, oh, have you told... Uh, have you told... Have you told Jacqueline? Mm. No, 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 no. Listen, it's not my job to tell Jacqueline. I'm not telling Jacqueline anything. Mm. This is about you now. Let's deal with this. Mm. I'm not telling anybody. It gives them a reassurance. Yeah. It invites them yeah. to talk to you. Yeah. It invites them to open up. So the five P's are very important. Wow. Present, practical, pray, pray personal. personal, protective. Wow, that's awesome. Do not, seek, do not seek to satisfy your curiosity at the expense of the person. Do not, be, do not judge. Mm. Be slow to speak. It's very important. I mean, Dr. Zion would, say, would tell us that in psycho in psychotherapy, sometimes you go for psychotherapy wow. sessions mm -hmm. and the therapist doesn't say a word. Mm -hmm. wow. And I've had patients that I send for psychotherapy who come back and say, oh, doc, I just went there and listened to myself. Mm -hmm. And I say to them, just keep at it. You will start to see the benefits. Mm -hmm. So it's about letting people ventilate let them come out don't overburden them don't judge them wow. don't stigmatize them wow. let them come out in this country we can always go to gps right. if the person does not want to go to gp encourage them to okay. you may not achieve it in one meeting but with persistence one day you will get to the person and you'll find out that, that the person has already gotten ready, <laughs> waiting for you. And they will say, do you want to go to G the GP with me? Mm -hmm. I see a practical demonstration of that in church services. Okay. When people give their lives to Christ, when they, they, are, they want to get converted. Right. And pastors say things like, if the person is shy and you are sitting beside them, if you are shy, if you don't want what to come out, yeah. 
Talk to the person next to you. The person next to you will come with you. Yeah. Yeah. So it's about working together. It's about doing things together. We can encourage people that way. Wow. Thank you so much. Wow. 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 Okay. I think I think I want Doc to also talk about something. You know, the question about whether black people are medicated more than white people. Yes. yes. Because that's a very, very popular myth. Yeah. And something that is I that, get a is lot that a myth to. actually? Oh fine. It, I think it's a myth. Okay. I think it's a myth too. Okay. Black people are not more medicated. The one area where black people had have had disadvantages mm. is that black people are more likely sometimes, and not with depression, to get section, to get detained okay. in hospital. Right. Black people are more likely to be stopped by police. Yeah. They are more likely to so things like that do happen, and I, I can't. I mean, we are not going to correct That's our reality. centuries of uh, racial, racial racial disadvantage yeah. in one day. Yeah. But in terms of depression, if you are sticking to depression, yeah. black people are not more likely to get medicated. It is not true. Yeah. In fact, what is medication in depression? It is help. If you tell me that somebody is more or less likely to medicate a black person mm. and say that is a disadvantage, I will go with it. Okay. Yes. And so black people are not more likely to be medicated. Black people are, are... You see, one of the things I must also point out is that we have... We, we don't lead very insular lives as black people. We tend to live in communities. So sometimes when people come out and show features of depression, everybody knows. The person is actually worse <laughs> than in other people. Mm -hmm. So that's where, where maybe people will say, oh, black people, we, mm -hmm. before, before we admit, yeah. because we are people who believe in stigma. Yeah, yeah. We see mental illness as a stigma. Yes, yeah. So before we admit that something is wrong, yeah. the thing has actually grown very bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is the truth about it. Yeah, that's true. So we are not we are not presenting at the same time as our Caucasian siblings. Yes. Yeah. We are more likely to present when the issue is too late. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, there's a question: Is depression always cured with medication, or can one be cured with, or can it be cured without? medication using the five p's only for instance that's where dr zion comes in i mean <laughs> doctor. she she treats depression without medication so yes so yeah. doctor talk to us i was going to say that first of all cure is a very i wouldn't use the word cure i would use manage managed okay yeah because i think part of the part of the whole point of depression is is the person's accepting acceptance of reality. Okay. Accept the reality that this is something they this is something they are experiencing. This is something they are prone to, and this is something that possibly they will always be prone to. Okay. So it's managing it and keeping it within. You know, people get miraculously cured, but by and large, a person who has a tendency towards that kind of you know feeling that way will always be prone towards it. So it's managing it to make sure that it never swims out of, it never gets out of proportion. The person manages to function. Okay. Um, it is not too extreme. Yes, it's possible that just by talking, learning things like mindfulness, learning things like, uh, you know, mind mapping. There's so many different techniques. They do all this tapping. They do all kinds of things now that can relieve, you know, and, and allow the person to be able to function. Okay. Um, people's circumstances can change. Right. So say, for example, somebody who is in a job that they don't like, living in a house they don't like, with people they don't like, would make them mood low. They could now find themselves in a, def you know, a life change. So they get married, they're now living with someone they do like, in a house they do like, and they get a new job doing the things they do like. They have the children that they've always wanted. You would, it would seem like the person has become a totally different person. So all these things, would you know so many factors can you know lead to make one feel that a person can be cured right. but yes a person can can um 
many people can feel better. They can cope without medication. But obviously, sometimes in extreme cases where the person just doesn't have the inner resources to, you know, they've become so depressed that they don't have the resources to actually work their way out for whatever reason. Yeah. You know, then they would, I would recommend them that you get some medication, even if it's just to pull you out of the doldrums to a point where you can begin to function and you can begin to see the wood for the trees. So, yeah. Now, doctor, one of the reasons why I hear that people don't want to take medication um, is because of the side effects. Some people say that it makes them feel, feel woozy. Some people say they put on weight. So can you talk about this, please? Um, Dr. Deomi or Dr. There's Blyne. a few. Yes, thank you for that. There's a few areas to look at. When it comes to medication and depression, there are two things. I mean, we were just talking about counseling. There's counseling, there's psychology, there's psychotherapy, which are all talking therapies. Okay. Mm -hmm. Depression can be adequately managed by those alone, okay. depending on the degree of the depression. Okay. If it's mild depression, mm -hmm. mild to moderate depression, you can manage it with psychological input. Okay. When it becomes major mm -hmm. or when it is persistent, even if it's mild depression, but if it's persistent, right. it's lasting for months and it's disturbing daily functioning. Okay. That's where medication comes in. Okay. Now, it's I subscribe to a school of thought that says it is not either or. How would anyone want to go in, into a boxing ring mm. with one arm tied behind their back? Mm if the other boxer is using two hands. Right. You don't want to go in with one hand tied behind you. Even if you went in with Anthony Joshua <laughs> and you had one hand tied behind your back, <laughs> you will cause him damage. Yes. So I say to people, it's always best if we do a combination of both. Okay. Now, when people talk, so the chance of recovery is better. And what that does is if medication starts to then, when you want to start to take the person off medications, mm -hmm. as I always do, it's always good to see whether this person can do well without medications. Okay. The psychology is taking care of things. Okay. Now, coming to side effects, people talk about side effects. I hear that side a lot. What are the side effects of depression itself? the loss of quality of life. Yeah. You're not enjoying your sleep. You're not enjoying your food. Mm -hmm. You're not enjoying your home. You're not enjoying your full life. You're not even enjoying being you. Mm -hmm. If people realize the dangers that depression poses, they will realize that it is best to go out and take medications if recommended. Now, if a doctor has good relationship with their patient, mm -hmm. it is good practice to monitor for those side effects. Okay. There are many, many types of antidepressants. Mm -hmm. There are many, 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 many types. Now, depression does not have a quick fix. Mm -hmm. One of the things that people talk about with depression, they talk about the fact that, oh, the medicines don't work. Now, let me say this. Most antidepressants will not show effects under four weeks. Okay. okay. There is no injectable antidepressant yet. <laughs> there is no antidepressant that people can sniff or whatever. Mm -hmm. So if people, if somebody suffers with depression, it's always good to have supportive relationships around them. Right. And the doctor or the therapist also needs to make <coughs> themselves available to encourage them. Okay. So when treatment starts, what you then do is that you are supporting the patient, you are listening to them. Right. So this whole thing about side effects, you will find that it will not play such a role if the therapist or the doctor makes themselves available okay. and they can discuss with the patient regularly. Okay. Textbooks recommend weekly consultations. If, you, if we cannot do, I mean, the pandemic, 
has come with a gift to medicine, telemedicine. Mm -hmm. You may not be able to do the appointment weekly, but you can make a video call yeah. weekly. You can discuss with them. You can encourage them. So people are right to be afraid or to, uh, to be apprehensive about side effects. But the ultimate consequence of depression itself is death. And I think there is no price too much to pay to avoid that. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, just I think... I think the, there's something else I wanted to add. Yes, please go. Just, just to say quickly, yes. Go on, Dr. Sorry, Zell, you, go on. Yes, I just oh. wanted to add that depression itself, if it's persistent, because it's hormonal, it does cause physical conditions. Okay. There is an interrelationship. You see, I said earlier that the body is not in compartments. Mm -hmm. We put the body in compartments. We talk about the eye the nose, we talk about the ears and the physical and the psychological. The body does not work that way. Mm -hmm. Everything flows. Yeah. The blood that is in the brain is the same blood that goes to the toes. Mm -hmm. It goes around. Mm -hmm. So, depression can result from physical conditions. Yeah. Physical conditions can result from depression. Research is ongoing about the role of depression in cancer, mm -hmm. okay. even as causation. Yes. Research is ongoing about how people, how fast people recover when the depression is treated right. in the face of other conditions, mm -hmm. chronic cardiac disease, chronic health, heart conditions has better prognosis if depression is treated. Yeah. Rheumatoid arthritis, all those conditions, because depression can also result as side effects of certain medications we use to treat other conditions. Wow. Steroids, for instance, yeah. can cause depression. Wow. Depression can result from hypothyroidism okay. when people have low thyroids. So these are all the things. The body is not in little cupboards mm. where one cupboard does not communicate with the next cupboard. Yeah. The body is a continuum, and it is important to know that. So depression itself is a, can be a killer. Mm. So we, we should not diminish it, and we should not, not de-emphasize it. In fact, we should now be telling people, GPs have now been told yes. to watch out for depression and treat depression early. Okay. Mm. Yes. Dr. Jomi, um, think... remember the article you sent to me? Sorry, Dr. Z, were you going to say something, Dr. Z? No, I was just going to say that another thing that I wanted um, um, Doc to comment on is that um, perception that once you're put on um, antidepressants, it's a lifelong thing. Because that's why a lot of people run away from it. They yeah. think, well, once yeah. I, they put yeah. me on it, that's it for the rest of my life. Mm. And then I get a label that's, yeah. Yeah. Dr. do you want to address that? It is not a lifetime thing. I always, when major depression is diagnosed, I subscribe to the school of thought that the first set of treatment at full dose is for three months. Okay. Then after three months, we start to reduce and get the max, the minimum effective dose. Okay. I try to try, I try to treat for six months. Okay. And after six months of treatment at good dosage, we start to take off the medication gradually. It's a gradual process. There's a rebound. You see what people, what, what, what has led to that view that um, it's for life, is that many people who have suffered with depression, yeah. when they start to feel better, will just stop the medication. Mm -hmm. And what then happens is there's a rebound. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And then they have to go back on the medication. So they say, oh, it's for life. Yeah. If it's properly handled, if the people are taken off the medication slowly, yeah. and of course, if there's counseling, yes. as Dr. Zoe said, if there is 
change of circumstance. Yes. Or people have been counseled to cope better with their circumstance. Mm -hmm. um, adaptive, adaptive steps are brought in. Mm -hmm. You will find that the person will function better. Okay. It has been possible to take people off medications. Okay. Not everybody, but I think everybody deserves that chance to at least attempt to take them off medications. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if there's a rebound, they've already been educated on it. They know that the doctor is working along with them. They are on a journey together. That's why it's good to support Liverpool Football Club, you see? <laughs> you can only say to your patients, you are not working alone. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and at this point, I need to say to my brethren, my sisters and my brothers, even if you're believing God for your healing, please mm. don't just take yourself off the um, pills or the medications. Yes. As Dr. Zewumi said, slowly work with your GP, work with your therapist. Don't just go off it and say, I'm believing God. God can do it. Yes, we know that. Mm -hmm. It can be uh, a miracle that will happen just like that. But at least let's do it. Slowly work with your doctor, mm -hmm. therapist. Yes, doctors? Yes. Would you yeah. agree? As, as the doctor is winning you off, yeah. If God heals you, you'll be fine. Whether you take the medicine or not, it's not going to make any difference. Yeah. You still, yeah. you are healed. You are healed. So, yeah. you know, at least allow the thing to drain out of your system slowly. Rather yes. Than... yes, yes, yes. Okay, so Dr. Deomi, please talk to us. Um, oh gosh, we, can't... <laughs> we could go on for another hour because know. there's still, still so many things. But you talked about, you sent me this article that talked about the effect of... Um, how depression and anxiety affects the body. Yes. Um, I know you've talked, you've picked up one or two points from that article, but just run through it quickly for us, please. Um, hmm. Depression and anxiety affect the body. For instance, I'll just not to, I know, time, I know that uh, time is not always, um, is not always something we can control. Yes. Anxiety alone, does cause cardiac problems, cardiac disease. Ooh, okay. We all know that high blood pressure is caused by anxiety. Mm -hmm. Now, when people are depressed or when people are anxious, the body goes into an overdrive. It secretes cortisol, mm -hmm. which is the emergency hormone of the body, right. which is what tells the body to prepare mm -hmm. for danger. Okay. Now, the effect of cortisol is that certain things go in, blood is diverted, but you are sweating more, the mm. heart is pounding more, mm. blood is diverted from abdominal organs to the limb muscles okay. because we share certain traits with animals. Mm -hmm. That is what tells an animal to prepare to run. Right. You know, it is the fight or flight response of the body. Yes. Yeah. Now, in a depressed person, Think about it. This is being secreted constantly. Mm -hmm. The body is being put under constant high alert. Right. The effect of it is that organs will start to fail. Wow. The body will start to say, you know what? Hey, I got, I, 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 I've had enough. Wow. So cardiac problems do ensue. Asthma. Mm -hmm. Asthma is directly linked to depression. People do suffer nosebleeds and things like that mm. from stress. Okay. I've mentioned high blood pressure. Now, we then have things like, um, uh, I think, um, you know, I said there's some relationship with gastrointestinal problems. And we, even with uh, eyesight issues from depression, mm. coughing, asthma, hypertension, okay. a lot of things do cause do, do, do occur mm -hmm. from depression. Okay. Um, so it's, it's not so complicated things. There are a few things that come to mind, but I don't want to start quoting the, the medical names okay. for these conditions. But depression is not... If, 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 you, if you think about it this way, mm -hmm. it's like leaving your car engine running. You go to bed at night and you just leave your car engine running. Okay till the next day, okay. you know? 
that engine is going to die it's very soon, again. very quickly. Mm -hmm. So depression puts the body at high alert. Okay. It leads to organ failure. Mm -hmm. It leads to all sorts of conditions. If it's um, there's a for the Yoruba speakers out there, there is a there is there is um, there, there's an expression. They say I baleokon oluri anu. The unsettled mind mm -hmm. is the chief of all ailments. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Olun <laughs> means the head. It's the generalissimo. Is the <laughs> is the is the is the president yeah. Yeah. of all sicknesses, irrespective whether it's cancer is anything. The unsettled mind yeah. is chief of all of them. Wow. You know, I think just based on what you just said, I have to do something about wellness, you know, so yes. that our mind can be settled. And because a lot of us, our minds are actually not all over the place. It's just like, yes. <sighs> and the mind is just going, oh, stop, 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 I've had enough. Yes. I mean, depression is an assault on sleep, mm. is an assault on appetite, mm. is mm -hmm. an assault on mood. Is an mm -hmm. assault on wellness, is an mm -hmm. assault on sexual functioning, is mm -hmm. an assault on everything the body wants to do. Wow. Depression is an assault on all of those things. I mean, we talk about how sleep helps us to recover. Mm -hmm. How sleep is a natural gift from God that when you go to sleep, you wake up feeling refreshed. Yes. Now, the depressed person does not wake up feeling refreshed. Wow. They either are not sleeping. Or if they sleep, they oversleep, but there's an expression for it. It is called non-gratifying sleep. So I've seen people who sleep for 18 hours of the day, but they wake up tired. Mm, yeah, yeah. So their eyes are short, but their body did not go to sleep. Wow. They are eating, they are overeating, comfort eating. They are not enjoying what they are eating. So they can be but a, they, they can't can help be, themselves. They can't. Yes. Yeah. There can be a diminution of sleep mm -hmm. and there can be hypersomnia. Wow. There's insomnia, which is when the person is not able to sleep, mm -hmm. and there's hypersomnia. There is diminished appetite and there's increased appetite. There is there is retardation where the person is not able to function. They are lethargic, they are not moving, everything becomes slow, and they can also become agitated. In agitated depression, the person is all over the place. They are sitting down in a room in winter and they are sweating. Wow. Ah, and that brings me to another thing. Actually, depression, when agitation ensues with depression in, in, in extreme grief, you know the, 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 what was described in the Bible? about Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane uh, mm -hmm. praying yes. and sweating yes. blood. Yes. Yep. Yeah. It's actually a medical thing. Yeah. It's capillaries under the skin. Yeah. Because the, the tension in the blood gets so high yeah. that the capillaries break yeah. and blood leaks into the sweat. Mm -hmm. this, the, the phenomenon is described as hematidrosis and the person starts to sweat blood. It is the skin equivalent of nose bleeding under stress. Wow. So when people, and, and this is one of the beauty of it, because when I, when I came across it, I realized how true the Bible is, mm. that medical science is now explaining something that happened all those centuries yes. ago. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And when people say they are believing God for their illnesses, I've had occasion to remind some of the patients I treat that the apostle Saint Luke yeah. was a doctor. Yes, 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 definitely. Yep. So embracing medical science is not evil. It's not. Oh, it's not. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so whose report will you believe? Believe both God <laughs> and believe your doctor. Let your doctor tell you the physical side of it and take it to the altar of prayer, yeah. and God will answer. Yeah, yeah. So whose report will you believe? Both. Wow. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. This has been awesome. awesome. The doctor will tell you the now. Yeah. God will tell you 
the end of it. Wow. Because he's the one that knows the beginning and knows the end. But there is no point denying the present. Mm. Mm. There is no point denying the present. We shortchange ourselves and we deny ourselves a lot of things. Yeah. Um, so. I, I love that. Embracing medical knowledge is not evil at all. Uh, there's a question. Um, because of the four, uh, five Ps that you gave us. So the question is, if someone who is depressed has started showing signs of disillusion, which points towards some harmful thoughts, is it wise yes. to stay with such a person? Or if they're not with you, how can you still support them without endangering yourself? It is wise to stay with them because if you are not with them, think of what they will do. Mm. Okay. It is wise to stay with them. It is also wise to speak to their GP. Even if they don't want you to? Even if they don't want you to. Okay. okay. You see, we all have a responsibility. There is a, there is a, there is a message. I'm not going to quote the message. I don't remember the message. Okay. But if somebody, a gentleman came to my church many years ago, and he preached a sermon mm -hmm. that he titled, From Knowing to Doing. And I just love that expression, mm. from knowing to doing. The moment you know yeah. that there is a danger, yeah. you must do something. Right. Okay. You can no longer say you don't know. Mm. So <clears throat> I would rather be accused of breaching the person's confidentiality, if that's what we are afraid of, yeah. by talking to their GP, yeah. than to have to attend their funeral and be told and, and, and be said off that you knew this was going to happen. Yeah. We all saw the incidents, the unfortunate incidents uh, last week that happened in South End, yeah. where a young man went into an MP's uh, surgery yes. and mm -hmm. stabbed him to death. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine if somebody knew that young man was going there and didn't do anything about it. Mm. So it's you are not breaching confidentiality if you speak to a GP because the GP will not divulge information. All you are doing is signposting. Yes. It's called whistleblowing. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not the same thing about gossiping about the person. Sure. So if somebody is going to be a danger to themselves yeah. at the point where life is being threatened, yeah you have a duty. It's no longer an obligation. It it's becomes a duty. A duty. Yes. Yeah. You have a duty to inform yes. appropriate authorities who can do something about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Even the police. Yeah. You are, it's not a criminal thing, but remember that the police have rights to enter houses. They have ways of persuading people especially with elderly people. Elderly people respect uniform. Yeah. I have been to homes of elderly people. You are trying to persuade them to come to hospital. They don't want to listen to you. Let an ambulance person come in with their green uniform yeah. or a police officer come in. They respect the uniform. That's true. That's true. Wow, okay. Um, there's another question that I was sent in. How do you identify if a child has bipolar? What, are, what is the cost and what are the triggers? I think we are discouraged from using diagnosis in, wrong, in young children. Oh, really? What's that? Yes. We are, we are discouraged because they say that it's just labeling, oh. that you... You may suspect bipolar disorder. Okay. I'm not, I've, I've seen it, I've seen it diagnosed, I've seen people, but in children, I tend to look at um, conduct disorders. Okay. I tend to talk about conduct disorders. I tend to talk about personality issues. Okay. Children are quite susceptible to counseling. They are quite susceptible to psychological input. Okay. Um, so I tend not to use, it's scary when, we put labels on them yeah. at a young age. Yeah. So we are discouraged from putting labels okay. or diagnosis on children. Okay. Yes, that's good. So how but can you help you someone that you feel is going through, has some of this thing? How can you help? 
we, we, when the features we call bipolar in children, I've always asked myself sometimes whether is this attention deficit disorder? Is this conduct disorder? Is it other things? Okay. Okay. Again, the way to do it. Sorry, what, what, what exactly is conduct disorder? Conduct disorder okay. is just bad behavior. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, it's just um, the way to do it is to talk to the GPs, is to talk to school counselors, okay. is to talk to the parents because sometimes you will find that the parents, I mean, we all know the importance we, we uh, as a society that we pay to having children. Yeah. And one of the things is that you say to some parents, oh, I think this is happening with your child. That will be the last day to, they ever talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> they, they will never talk to you again. They will, you have automatically become Satan. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So one of the ways to do it is to be persistent and to talk to the GP. Yeah. The GPs are encouraged. GPs have resources to many families. GPs are very close to them. GPs knows the family well. They know in some people who have lived in areas, especially the Caucasians, who live in the same areas as their parents or the Asians, yeah. will find out that the GP is like a family friend. Uh, not my GPO, but yeah. anyway. He knows the grandparents, he knows everybody. <laughs> yeah. So it's always a good idea to talk to GPs. GPs are very, very important in our society. Yeah. People do not, people underestimate the importance of GPs. They are very crucial. It's good to talk to them. It's good to talk to school teachers. Yeah. It's good to talk to the counselors in school. Find out if the child is getting into trouble in school mm -hmm. because the school also have powers to call attention via the local authority. Okay. Okay. So even when the parent is in denial and they can't see it, if they get someone to come and see the headmaster <laughs> and the headmaster is saying to them, oh, we want to bring somebody from the local authority, from a counselor, we want to bring a psychologist in, things like that, I think reality starts to set in. Okay. Okay. Wow. Um, there was another question I was going to ask you. Some of these things, depression, uh, bipolar, for a lot of us coming from uh, African background, sometimes we say it is a uh, spiritual. It is our village people doing us. Is that true? <laughs> is that a pos is it a possibility that some of this could actually be spiritual problems? Hmm. Hmm. Zion, I'm not sure how you look at this. <laughs> but... I mean, hey, look. If we if we, if we talk as Christians, right? Yeah. There's a, there there is a spiritual element to everything. Okay. We can't uh, escape that. So, you know, that's the reality. But I think in cases like this, or in in any case. You know, whatever it is, you know, people will say there's, you know, people are, are, someone sent an arrow to somebody and they got cancer. Yeah. Regardless of what it is, yeah. it still needs to be treated in yeah. the physical. Whatever it is, it is manifesting in the physical. Yeah. So the physical aspect of it has to be addressed. Yeah. Nothing exactly. wrong with praying, nothing wrong with fasting, but I think it is very, very important that and that's why I try to explain to people that do the spiritual but do the physical. Absolutely. Cover all the bases Absolutely. and you'll be fine. Yeah. Because you can't nobody can come up and say it was an arrow, it wasn't an arrow. Well, maybe some people have that gifting, but the majority of us will never be able to definitively say that it was spiritual. Yeah. yeah. It's it's difficult to it's difficult to compartmentalize it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think one of the one of the disservice we do ourselves is seeking to put things in boxes mm. and in compartments, mm. irrespective of the cause. We can still intervene, yeah. whether the whether the, the whether the man wet himself or somebody threw water on him, 
or he just walked in from the rain. The important thing is that his trouser is wet. wet. Exactly. And if you have a dry, clean <laughs> pair of trousers, let him change his Give trousers, him help him to change it. He will feel better, irrespective of where the wetness came from. Um, but I mean, it's it's it will be ignorant to it will be it will be ignorant and it will be overstretching what we think is our medical knowledge or our uh, our earthly intellect yeah. to claim that there is no spiritual component mm. to some things. Mm. But what I know is that um, until we know, give the help you can give. Yeah. Um, I, I still don't, I still, I still, I still am searching for reasons in some cases because I've seen cases where not depression alone, some conditions where you give all the treatment and you try and you do this and you do this. And every time you do one treatment, the situation starts to change mm -hmm. for another thing. And you start to wonder. Sometimes I have seen cases where with, the, with prayers, where the family are praying people and all that, things start to get better. And I will give an example of somebody I was treating where, and I kid you not, this is a true story where I'd used different medications. Yeah. The parents would not let him out of their sight. He was always at home. Okay. I had used different medications on this gentleman. It was the psychologist they were paying that invited me, okay. private psychologist. And then I'd used everything and nothing worked. And one day when I left the home, I literally heard in the car, why don't you try this? Okay. And I stopped and I thought that was the very first medication I ever prescribed for this man. This was two years after I started seeing him. Okay. And I went back to the parents and said, look, I'm going to have to try this again. It was where we started from, yeah. but I'll have to try it again. I prescribed that medication for him, okay. and this was six years ago. Yeah. This gentleman has not had one breakdown wow. in the last six years. Mm -hmm. He's completely okay. He's doing well. Thank and that medication working for him now was something we had actually tried before mm -hmm. that did not work. Mm -hmm. But on a certain day, yeah. the concept came, the idea came. I, I know where I know where I believe the I thought came yes. from, yeah. but I don't want to, you know, overflog it. But I still can't explain it. So I think we should just zero in on the fact that we do not know everything. No. Yeah. Things. I mean, there's a there's a Hindi there's a Hindu saying. Yeah. It was a Hindu man that said it. I read it online. Yeah. And the man, the man said, the God you understand is no God. Mm. 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 Yeah. You know, so we must understand that we will always have mysteries. We will always have, but whether it's a mystery or not, do your best. Do what is within your powers, what is within your area of influence, your capacity to do. Mm. Wow. Um, gosh, we are, it's almost two hours since we've been on. But Dr. Mm -hmm. Zoe and Dr. Domi, can I ask for a huge, huge favor? I'm going to get you both to come back again sometime in November. Um, I've just seen there's a gentleman, I believe, who is on, who said he's a medical doctor who suffers from depression. If you're listening to me, I'd love to have you come and talk about it because you're a Christian, you're a medical doctor, and you admitted you, you suffer from depression. And I would love to have you come and talk about it because for a lot of people, it'll be like, what? And then that you're even talking about, at least you put it on this, um, on the um, comment box. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for doing that. We need more people like you to come and talk about it because there's no stigma attached to this. No. And that's what, one of the things we're trying to do to break down the stigma attached to all these um, medical health challenges that people may have. But it's really been amazing. And I'm definitely going to have you guys back. Please, please, please. Um, 
Thank you so much. But before we go, I want each of you to leave us with a last word. We want to give people a message of hope. Um, point them in the right direction. What can you do? Just whatever it is you feel led to share with us as we end the session, please. And if, even if it's just, even if it's a prayer, because I know you guys are Christians. So, yes, um, I leave both of you to end it whichever way you want to. But thank you. You really helped us. Everyone has been saying it's been amazing, really amazing session. Thank you so much. God bless you. You're very welcome. I'll go first. I think all I want to say is just as the topic of this um, session is, you're not alone. Yeah. There is always help out there, you know, for if, if, if I'm going to go a bit further, I think what I want to say is keep your eye out, you know, pay attention to the people around you. Okay. Let's stop being, I think one thing the, the pandemic has may have, I guess, exacerbated is the, the the tendency to be insular let's keep an eye out for the people around us especially you know the young people the young people arguably don't have the same resilience that the older ones have mm -hmm. so keep an eye out for them you know pick up anything going wrong remember that you can get help for them let's let's break that myth of black young people black children black people we only they only um, get help when it's extreme yeah. let's start nipping things in the bud very quickly you know i think that's what i would like to say and always remember that we're, we're not alone mm -hmm. forget about all this stigma rubbish you know it's all over the place as you know doctor is in the front line of it he's in the hospital he sees it all the time yeah. so you know it's it's not just something that you know happens to black people it's all over it's it's what is the is the health crisis of this decade you know so let's deal with it and yeah that's that's my little topic thank you so much thank you okay my my little contribution is simply to say that we sit in front of cameras now and we talk about these things yeah. um my sister Funke has her own issues yeah She's a very pretty woman, very <laughs> extremely you. pretty woman. But she has her challenges. Yeah, yeah. I have my challenges. Yeah. My sister Zion has her challenges. No, so we all have our burdens in life. Absolutely. My brother, the doctor who put something there, I don't know you, but I pray and I. I pray that all goes well for you. And I, it's courageous coming up and yeah. saying yeah. what you have said. Yeah. I, so for anybody out there, please just know that there is no shame in seeking help. Yeah. We are discouraged as professionals. We are discouraged if... Uh, from turning the session into our personal events, talking about ourselves and all that. So when we talk like this, people may think that we've got it all set and we've got everything, uh, everything is honky-dory, the birds are flying and the butterflies are there and the, and the flowers are releasing fragrances in the air. <laughs> it is not true. We have our challenges. Yeah. But the one thing I want us to address is the issue of stigma. Mm. Stigma, what is stigma? Stigma is apportioning a sign of infamy, a sign of disgrace, a sign mm. of blemish yes. to something, yeah. a sign of reproach. Yeah. We have discussed a condition here that I can say to you for a fact that 100% of us mm. on this uh, broadcast yeah have had depression before. Yes. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Definitely. Every single one of us. Yeah. 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 Now, we did not all go to major depression, but we've all had depression. Yes. So that shows you that is nothing to be ashamed of. Okay. So let's stop looking at things like it's a reproach. I can say of all three of us whose faces you are looking at on the screen that 
if you need to talk about yourself and you approach any one of us, your confidentiality is guaranteed. We are all bound by codes of conduct and ethical, uh, ethical and statutory uh, uh, codes, codes yeah. that forbid us from yapping away about whatever you share with us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you are not alone. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. thank you. Wow, wow. Thank you, Dr. David. Thank you, Dr. Zoe. And it's true. Every single one of us, I put my hand up. There was a period when I was depressed. And I didn't even know that I was depressed until I realized that every little thing, I was always crying. Everything made me cry. I know I cried. I mean, like, even now I'm feeling a bit teary with everything that you guys have said. But that's a different, <laughs> that's a different one. But, and I know Dr. Zoe Shitu will tell you the same thing. Dr. Dilmi said the same thing. So there's nothing to be ashamed of. And I saw another person, one of my sisters, to put up the thing that she too suffered from depression. So, you know, if more of us can come up and say, yes, I've been through that. I, it happened to me some time ago, then there will be all the stigma we're talking about, then hopefully, um, gradually, we'll start to break, um, break down the stigma of um, mm -hmm. attached to depression and bipolar and all this other stuff. But thank you so much. You guys have been amazing. And our prayer is that this session would have helped someone and as Dr. Zoe said, you are not alone. Please seek help. Reach out to Dr. Zoe, Dr. Dilby. The handles are there. Send them. I'm sure, well, hopefully you guys don't mind if they send you messages. No, I don't mind at okay. all. And apart from even sending me messages, I can just send out articles to people. Please. There are publications we come across. So okay. you do not have to be listening to me. You're listening to the best brains across the world. Um, there are articles in newspapers oh. that I come across that are very useful. Okay. You know, when you know the truth, the Bible says when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Yes. Um, I know it was referring to Jesus Christ, but in this case, <laughs> when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, if you send it to me, I will post it on all my social media handles what's, and all of that, and whoever wants it. So yeah, the handles, Dr. Zion is, um, Dr. Zion, can you put your handle on the thingy, comment box? Um, Dr. Delmi is, let me put Dr. Delmi, so on, is at D, D, E, I think it's D. Can someone help me put Dr. Zoe and Dr. Um, Dr. Delmi's thing? Uh, oops, gosh, what did I put? Um, Dr. Delmi is D, Oh, Gabi, can you put Dr. Jeremy? I think, yes, thank you very much. D. Ogunshaya, and that's it. So you can. I'll try and make it funkier sometime. No, this is fine. This is fine. I'll put something like brain doctors. No, 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 I'm really joking. Oh, wow. This has been good. Thank you. I really do appreciate both of you. And you know, Oh, gosh, I do pray that, you know, <laughs> some, um, someone's life would have been touched today um, mm -hmm. to know that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. we, and we're not just saying this for because we're on Instagram Live. We really, really want you to know that you're not alone. We love you. Um, and we're here to help you. Again, I'm going to put up, I, I've done it a few times, but this time I'm going to add Dr. Dilmi to it um, as a psychiatrist. A list of therapists, counselors that you can reach out to if you need them. So thank you, folks. And we'll see you next week by the grace of God. Thank you. I love you all. And please reach out to someone today. Be kind. Say a kind word to someone. Do something. Oh, gosh, I need to go through that thing again, Dr. Dilby, because a lot of people joined afterwards. You know, he gave us five Ps to help yes. people. Presence, practical health, presence as in be there for them. Practical health, help them, you know, to do things, chores. Pray for them if you're a praying person. Um, personal, so it's not about, um, how, can you explain that again, the personal bit? Personal is about... Letting them know that you are there yeah. 
for them. It's not the time to be busy with WhatsApp yeah. or watching skits on your phone or or making 20 phone calls. Oh, hey, hold on a minute. I just want to talk to my child. But no, no, that's not the time for it. Okay. When you are with them, be dedicate time. that time to the person. Yeah. Let them be aware that you are there for them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then the last one is be protective. You know, then he, you know, he talked about the issue of confidentiality. You don't want to tell their story all over the place. Be protective of them. So it, I'll post again. I, I, I think I'm going to post that on the, the Hangout Cafe handle. Dr. Zoe, as usual, amazing. Thank you so much. Dr. Delby, wow. Thank you. Amazing, awesome. amazing. God bless you guys. If we had to pay for these two people, hmm, God knows how much we would have paid. Hmm. But I thank you. God will pay you. 